Very nice. Okay. So this presentation uh, presentation is about uh, has two parts basically. I am from Nexus Group, um, a PKI uh, and software and service provider. I'm going to do uh, give you some introduction about PKI based security for IoT and the DDR that you already uh, heard in this uh, in the session. Uh, we'll present a demonstration of what I'm only explaining. Uh, allow me a few words about Nexus group very shortly we deal with digital ids for persons computers and uh, newly uh, for smart things we are i can say one of the pki uh, pioneers on the market we do we create pki and uh, sell pki software for more than 30 years now we have also nice very interesting high scale iot applications for pki we provide services pki services for vehicles charge stations household appliances like uh, washing machines pumps and valves for industrial use uh, medical medical equipment our philosophy is to promote open standards and this is also why we uh, contribute to the teenage io project why do we need security in IoT? I think it's it's a common sense that uh, IoT devices are typically in the internet or close to the internet. They are typically managed by non-expert people, not by corporate IT who is already equipped with uh, protection tools. And uh, so it's internet connected exposed devices are a security risk and the natural target for cyber attacks uh, uh, that I think we, we think will increase in future uh, quickly. Why? Uh, a hacker can uh, turn a device to malfunction, which can cause physical damage, because IoT is of it, has a link to the physical world, can cause physical damage or even harm to humans. Uh, the IoT device, because it's, it's not so uh, very powerful and not very well uh, protected maybe can be used to host malware and attack other internet sources or also can be easily um, um, taken for ransomware attack you know where you have to pay so that your service and devices remain available it is it can come that uh, business relevant data is easily lost so that your competitors or uh, other uh, countries can make a picture of all of your customers, all of your uh, products that you sold in the, in the market. It can come to privacy breach so that your end users, consumers can be tracked, profiled, and uh, all this data can be sold to organized crime. Uh, a very simple example to figure out when you are at home and when you are not, when you are on holiday. And cyber war, I think uh, every, of us, uh, every of us heard about attacks on uh, critical infrastructure. So PKI can solve a lot of this, uh, many of these security problems. And let me just uh, list a number of them. It can provide for communication security and that contains uh, solving authentication, which will give a proof of the identity of the device to a uh, service the device connects to or vice versa the device can be, make sure that the service it connects is the right service and, and, and not a smooth service the data can be encrypted so that nobody in the internet can internet can interpret it but the uh, rightful uh, recept, uh, um, uh, receiver of the data uh, it can PKI can provide digital signatures, which again provide proof of origin and integrity on any type of da data. It can even provide the so-called non-reputation service. Uh, an example is a vehicle can sign um, a bill at the charge station, and and the owner of the of the vehicle cannot repudiate later on that he was charging his car at that station. Code security, uh, code signing, I think all of you know, it is good that the device can make sure that the uh, the uh, firmware upgrade is has comes from the right origin. It was not manipulated, so it's in integer. There are also other applications you can put uh, into the certificates, in the PKI certificates, information about roles, permissions, affiliation, or the service tenant in the case of the 
uh, of an IoT platform. So a lot of information that gives um, the connected application it gives connected application information about the permissions or roles uh, role of the connecting device. And I would like to mention that revocation is built in PKI. Very nice feature. If a device gets lost, uh, broken, it's decommissioned, you can just revoke this, its certificate and it will stop being able to connect to any other devices or services. So how to secure communication with PKI? Uh, I will show this on this very uh, simple uh, example here. We have a, a device and a cloud service it would like to connect to. For secure communication, we need a certificate, a, um, actually a private key and a certificate in the device and also in the in the cloud service. This certificate comes from a trusted certificate authority. <clears throat> the, the certificate authority digitally signs the certificates with, which basically links the public key of the device with the uh, with its identity, that means its name, its, its unique uh, identity in, in the IoT application. And the, CA, and the CA's own certificate has to be installed in own devices and now the how to use this certificate um, say uh, that the device would like to uh, send some uh, information to the uh, to the cloud service then the receiver the cloud service will use the sender's certificate to verify its identity to, to make sure that it is indeed this the device X and not another device Y stating, claiming that he is device, it is device X or even a hacker software or something else in the internet. And now the sender can also use the other parties, the receiver's certificate to encrypt information for it so that only the cloud service will be able to interpret the data that it sends. The communication Security is provided also in the tin uh, uh, edge.io. It, it uses actually MQTT over which uh, yeah, carries uh, yeah, the use the payload data, but the transport protocol is TLS. TLS means transport layer security, and this is the most common means to secure internet communication. You use this every day when you are surfing in the internet, and uh, all the websites you are uh, connecting have a server certificate. They must have a cert server certificate because per default the browser will stop and not allow you to connect to the service, uh, that web service, uh, web server, if it has an invalid certificate or it has no certificate. Also the communication is encrypted between your browser and then the service and in the same way between the device and the, uh, and the IoT platform or other type of service. The TLS is also very nice, cryptographically secure, it, and it uh, excludes the possibility for a so-called man-in-the-middle attack, which means that an, 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 an a third party can you know, sit in the, uh, in the middle of the communication between the sender and the receiver and understand everything, while the, others, the other parties have no clue about that someone is listening to all the messaging. There is one key point. I mean, DLS is, is very common. It's, uh, you, you find a lot of literature, but the literature doesn't speak about how to get a certificate, how to enroll a certificate for a device, and how to provision it in, into a secure way. And, and this is this described in, on this slide, on the same example. We have a device and a cloud service, and we, we would like to give the device <coughs> uh, a PKI certificate in a secure way. This is not a trivial problem because it can be, instead of a device, it can be a hacker software or uh, in, instead of the, in place of the intended device, it can be another device or it can be even a hacker software that tries to be onboarded to the IoT platform or to the application. So we have to prove that this device is the real, the one that we mean and that is authorized and, and this we call it the proof of ownership and the procedure goes uh, as follows um, the device owner creates first an account in the iot platform then he logs in to the device 
and starts the onboarding request. Now the, the, the device will use the, this user's credentials, that means login name, account name and password to start the process, to start the onboarding process. Uh, based on this credentials, because the device can present these credentials, um, the IoT platform can trust now the device and assign it to the same account. Now as next, so the, device, the service they can now trust the device. This is very good. We have proved uh, the, the ownership of the device. Now what happens that is uh, that the uh, platform will create a password and register the device in the certificate authority. It registers the device ID, the device unique name, the password, and also the tenant ID of the user. So with that, the CA, CA got to know about the device and knows, okay, I can trust this device if it comes to me and would like to have a certificate. And this is indeed what is, is next. The password is returned also to the device. And just in the same onboarding process and transparent to, to the uh, user, to the device owner, the device can now request a certificate. The, cert the C certificate authority can trust another device because it has the proof. The request contains the unique ID and the password and the tenant ID, and will issue a certificate exactly with the uh, uh, with these parameters, with the user and the tenant ID uh, uh, for the device uh, with the device ID. So this is the theory, and now Didier can demonstrate this. Thank you, Thomas. So um, right now, I, I'm a device that is uh, a, a new device. The device is not connected to the cloud. It has no uh, certificate. This is a new device. And I'm connected to that device. So this is the first link. I, I'm aware uh, this is my device. I, I can trust the, the relationship between me and my device. And I have to transfer this um, uh, trust to the cloud and then to Nexus. Uh, so the first step will be to uh, um, uh, to uh, yes to, uh, to to request a new certificate uh, to uh, to community. Uh, the, the key point to notice here is that this is to community. I will not request the, the certificate directly to the to the cloud uh, to to Nexus at least from a user perspective. Uh, I have to provide uh, uh, my, um, uh, obviously, an endpoint. I wish to, to connect to this cloud. I, I have uh, this tenant. I have an account to this cloud. Here is my username, my account on this cloud. So the cloud will trust me, uh, provided I uh, some password. And I wish to have a new device. So this one has already been created. I will just uh, create a new one. And I just, uh, uh, so I have to authenticate. So the cloud will trust me and trusting uh, my relationship to the, uh, uh, to, uh, the device uh, will uh, do everything to, for me. And now I have a certificate. So you can see that the uh, common name for the, uh, the subject of this certificate is my uh, new uh, device ID. And this certificate has been signed by SortYG. Again, uh, you've seen uh, no nexus here. Uh, I will explain you how everything is working behind the scene. First, I will just sh show you how uh, that now I can connect to the cloud using that new certificate. So again, some messages are sent to the cloud to create a certificate to show this a new certificate. And on the cloud side, you will have, uh, um, yes, just to double check. Okay, my uh, my device has been uh, created on the cloud. On the cloud side, I will have a new certificate. I can reload my list of certificates uh, of devices. And I have, yes, my new device ready to receive data and uh, to, to, to be used from Synedge. So the user experience is, um, I, I think, quite simple. Just to be clear, this is a work in progress. Uh, we are still working on this, um, on this um, user experience. And um, 
and to, to have this uh, working on int with Synage. Just now, next step to explain how this is working. First, things to, no to notice that on my QMLCD uh, uh, note, I have a single uh, uh, unique certificate. This is a certificate, a certificate from uh, uh, to also 2AG. This is all the devices that has uh, with a certificate signed by Soto AG will be accepted, trusted by uh, this tenant. You can notice that this certificate has been um, provided by Nexus. In fact, even my uh, uh, device certificate has been uh, provided by Nexus and signed on BEA, in fact, on behalf of um, uh, Soto AG. This is done. Uh, so the second important piece is, uh, of work is this uh, uh, microservice. Uh, community can be extended with microservice. In that case, we have a microservice uh, to register a device. My first connection, my first request of a certificate has been sent to that uh, microservice. Yes, so I have an application here. This is uh, my uh, microservice. This is a, a, a microservice that we establish the relationship between a new device and Nexus. So, for instance, I can see uh, all the requests and uh, my uh, fresh request uh, to register a new device uh, number six. And now coming back to the certificate, I will just show you um, uh, some uh, low-level command uh, to to explain uh, what is going on behind the scene. The, the very first step is to create uh, uh, um, to, to create a signing request. C creating a signing request, in this is a two-step operation. You have first to create a private key and to uh, uh, I can, it will be simple to show uh, the certificate. Uh, um, uh, so my, my, my uh, new, uh, sorry. So this is a, a CSR, a CSR is, is a, just uh, I pretend to be that certificate. I join my my public key and I sign everything with my private key, and this will be sent to the uh, to Nexus. And Nexus will be uh, able to to uh, trust me, uh, trust that I own the private key, and uh, he will uh, Nexus will need another mean to to be sure that uh, I am uh, who I pretend to be. And for that, I have to uh, send the first request uh, to uh, the microservice I just sent you, uh, show you. Uh, so, sorry, uh, sorry. Um, yes, so this is this request. This is a request, uh, uh, before I give my password, this is a request to, to my microservice, so to, to the cloud. Uh, to uh, to my microservice and ask to register a device. And this is a new ID for my device, and I have uh, to provide some uh, uh, identity. So I have to sign in. And what? I, so the uh, the service is is called, and. Um, uh, as shown by uh, Tamas, this uh, service will check that I, I, I'm trusted. I'm trusted because I provided the correct password for uh, for this user. And so uh, this service creates uh, a one-shot uh, password and user uh, sent back to the uh, to the device, but also sent to Nexus. And now I just have to uh, connect this endpoint. This is. Uh, this, uh, the response, in, in fact, is simple. To, to, to get your, um, your uh, certificate signed, you just have to, to uh, reach this uh, service with this user on password to post your CSR, and uh, you will have um, the certificate back. Another. 
Yes, this one. So I will, I will just change the user password with the appropriate uh, content. It just has been provided by the so the user here. The password. Uh oh. Uh, Sorry. Uh, QBPass is not always working. And so the password, the just password. And the endpoint. And this, this request will just return me uh, the certificate. So this is the certificate, and now I can use this certificate uh, to connect uh, Cumulus. Thank you.